Pastor Ed here with Daily Devotions for Thursday, September the 26th, 2024. Our reading for today is taken from the Gospel of John, the 8th chapter, beginning at the 31st verse. Then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. And they answered him, We're descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you'll be made free? And Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. And so if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The pastor was once speaking on the topic of spiritual freedom. He began to uh, wax poetical in his delivery as he repeated over and over the phrase, I'm free, I'm free, praise God, I'm free indeed. And after the service, a little boy shook his hand and said, Preacher, I'm free, I'm free, I'm free indeed. And the pastor, beaming with pride, just knowing that his words had, had touched such a young heart, responded, That's wonderful, young man. And the little boy quickly replied, Yes, sir, and next year I'll be four. <laughs> Freedom. Um, you know, these words, if you're truly my disciples, if you continue my word, you're truly my disciples, the truth will, you will know the truth, the truth will make you free. We talk a lot about freedom uh, in this country and in our society. Um, it seems to be, as always, um, even more of a buzzword um, in election season. Um, and I was thinking about that because I was, I was listening to a uh, a pastor who does an election sermon uh, every uh, year and um, doesn't apparently, at least from what I could tell, doesn't endorse any political candidates, but um, talks about the, uh, the things that Christians should be keeping in mind when they go to the ballot box. And I was thinking about how we um, often define freedom, especially in this country, you know, freedom from expectations. It's all about freedom from something, right? Freedom from expectations, freedom from, from rules and laws, freedom from being judged. Um, and the big one, especially this time of year, is freedom from government. Um, and basically what it boils down to is um, freedom from being told what to do. We want to be totally free. Um, but it's somewhat an illusion and it's also a little bit more complicated than that because the question that occurs to me is, you know, what about when we're, when I'm experiencing exercising my freedom um, and it infringes upon uh, the rights and the freedoms of another person uh, and keeps them from exercising theirs? Hmm. It's not, not quite so uh, easy. Martin Luther once wrote a little booklet entitled uh, the Tr A Treatise on Christian Liberty, sometimes uh, also known as the freedom of a Christian. You know, so what is a, the freedom of a Christian all about? Again, if you were to listen to some pastors in some churches, they would definitely uh, have a, a, an idea of what freedom was for a, what is for a Christian. It's a freedom from all these things kind of controlling you. Uh, oftentimes, um, all about the freedom from. But Luther talks about um, freedom in a different way. He writes, to make the way smoother for the unlearned, <laughs> uh, for only them do I serve, I shall set down the following two propositions concerning the freedom and the bondage of the Spirit. The first of these, he, sa he writes, is, A Christian is a perfectly free Lord of all, subject to none. Okay, makes sense. But then he follows that up with, A Christian is a perfectly dutiful servant of all, subject to all. He goes on to say, These two theses seem to contradict each other. If, however, they should be found to fit together, they would serve our purpose beautifully. Both are Paul's own statements, the Apostle Paul, who says in 1 Corinthians 9, 
For though I am free from all men, I have made myself a slave to all. And in Romans 13, O oh, to no one anything except to love one another. Love, says Luther, by its very nature is ready to serve and be subject to him who is loved. And so Christ, although he was Lord of all, was born of a woman born under the law, Galatians 4.4, 4, and therefore was at the same time a free man and a servant in the form of God and of a servant. Another way to look at this uh, was written by um, somebody named uh, Robert Youngs. He writes, I have on my table a violin string. It's free. It's free. It's free to do. Uh, it's free not to do, rather, he says, to do what a violin string is supposed to do, which is obviously produce music. So he says, I take it, I fix it in my violin, I tighten it till it's taut, and only then is it free to be a violin string. By the same token, he says, we are free when our lives are uncommitted, um, but not to be what we were intended to be. Real freedom is not freedom from, but freedom for. The freedom that Christ talks about is to be is to be free to be in Christ, free to love others um, as Christ loves us, um, and to love Christ by loving others. Let us pray. Lord, set us free to love you by serving others. Amen. Well, I hope you have a great day, and I'll be back with you again tomorrow. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.